Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Katie Reinhardt. I'm the Special Collections Librarian here at the Main Street Branch of the Davenport Public Library. Today, I'm going to be sharing with you um, part of our Map and Atlas collection, specifically the Maps and Atlases of Melchior Hubinger. Uh, Hubinger uh, <clears throat> so um, I'll be talking specifically about not all of the maps and atlases he created, but those in our collection that have to do with uh, local history. So that would be Scott County and the city of Davenport. Um, I'll be discussing four of the atlases of Scott County and the city of Davenport maps that were connected to those. Then some separately created city maps and then two state of Iowa atlases that include information about both the county and the city in them. Uh, the real expert on the works of Melchior Hubinger is a man named Michael Flaherty. He's a collector and I'm relying a great deal on both his catalog and some notes that he shared with me for the information in this presentation. So shout out to Mr. Flaherty. Uh, let's get started. This is Here is a photograph and signature of Mr. Melchior Hubinger. He was born in 1854 in Limburg an der Lahn, and that's in Germany, uh, between Bonn and Frankfurt. Uh, he worked for a few years as a civil engineer and surveyor for the German government. And in 1880, he immigrated to the United States to work for the Rock Island arsenal um, to work for the Army Corps of Engineer as a surveyor and a map maker on some projects along the Mississippi River. He soon left work at the arsenal and he burst on the map making scene in 1882. Uh, he produced three different items um, that year. Uh, the first one he made is actually not in our collection, unfortunately. And I don't know uh, if anyone knows if it exists. Uh, it's, it was a city of Davenport map described uh, in the May, eight, May 1882 weekly Davenport Gazette. Uh, it was a correctly made and finely engraved map of the city of Davenport, 24 by 14 inches in size showing all the streets, railroads, streetcar lines, churches, halls, public buildings, ward boundaries, all the fire alarm boxes, the houses where the keys to the fire alarm boxes are kept, the engine houses and fire plugs. It also has the names of all the streets so designated that they can be found at a glance. So I would love to see this if anyone knows. <laughs> if this exists. Uh, yeah, uh, it says also in this article, the work will fill a long felt want. Mr. Hubinger in connection with city assessor Schmidt, that's Hugo Schmidt, will soon issue a large new map of Scott County. And that's what you see on the screen here. This was the topographical map of Scott County and vicinity showing the Tri-Cities. Uh, it was available by the end of 1882 because the only description I could find of it in the local newspapers was that at the very end of December, an article saying, this is 14 by 20 inches in size. It's printed upon heavy cloth so as to be folded without damage in about the size of five by seven inches. And that is indeed what we have. We have one copy bound in uh, red cloth with stamped in gold. And um, 
uh, but there's no there's no text as described in the in the newspaper article. Uh, but we do have this digital copy of a an edition from the following year, 1883, and that had. Um, lots of advertisements in it and a sketch of Scott County uh, that was uh, mentioned in the newspaper article. And on the left here, uh, the continuation of a brief but very flowery history of Davenport. And I'll read you a, a bit of how that begins. Long before the foot of the white man had trod the shores of the new world, the dusky natives had selected one favored spot as the garden of their vast domain, where nature had lavished with generous hand all that could contribute to render the scene enchanting to the beholder. When the pale face first penetrated as far as the mighty father of the waters, he too became enchanted with the surpassing loveliness of the red man's Eden also with a practical eye saw how the development of its wonderful resources would soon make the locality the center of extensive commercial and manufacturing enterprise and that was pretty much the last part was pretty much the aim of uh these these atlases and and maps published by hubinger was to support the developing business community um and you can see on the right here, there's descriptions of every town and uh, what kind of rail lines they have growing through them, what kinds of um, products they produced. Uh, and then they mention by name, different uh, businesses, different storekeepers and so on. And it also includes on the right hand side some more advertisements. I've enlarged the one um, for a stone dealer, a dealer in monument stones, whose name is Hard, which I think is funny, Charles Hard. Um, I like the, there's this ad uh, here for the Davenport Ladder Company on the right in the form of a ladder at 122 East 3rd Street. And there's also uh, plenty of German speaking, uh, German ads because of course Davenport was a center for uh, immigration from Germany. Uh, Mr. Schlegel was a druggist. Uh, here we have some more ads that show uh, what the buildings looked like at the time in the 1880s. I think some of these are a little bit fanciful, um, especially this ad for Ryan the Hatter, which uh, there's, as you could, seems to be a sign on a post that's in the shape of a hat. So I wonder if that really existed. <laughs> so this is incredibly helpful for those of us with all the names that are mentioned, um, doing genealogical research for people in Scott, who had ancestors in Scott County and Davenport, or people interested in building and land history. So also sometime during this year of uh, 1882, the Sch Schmidt and Hubinger's map of Scott County was published. Um, so this appears to have been a bound at atlas, and I'm not sure because we don't have the original in our collection, and I don't know of any that exist. Uh, it survives only as a reproduction in the 1977 publication, a reprint of all four of Hubinger's Atlases of Scott County called the Combined Atlases of Scott County. So these are just some black and white copies of what that may have looked like. Uh, again, it had 
advertisements, and in this case, uh, including uh, for Melchior Hubinger, city engineer and surveyor, civil engineer and surveyor. And we found out where his office was on Scott Street. The Scott County map um, obviously has less detailed than, uh, than the color map that was printed on linen that we looked at earlier. Um, lots of advertisements. This chair looks rather comfortable. Um, each page of this atlas had, uh, uh, e each township had a, a separate page in, in this atlas. Um, we have Buffalo, Bluegrass, here's Davenport Township. And you can see on these, the names of the, all the landowners are included. And there are features like timberlands, orchards, coal mines, cemeteries, churches, schoolhouses, and even some farmhouses are illustrated on the maps. And there's a city of Davenport map. Uh, but this does not, it's not as detailed as the one described in the, in the uh, newspaper article that I read in the beginning that was, that was talking about a very detailed map. Um, so I don't, I don't know if this is a separate item or not, but uh, there is a, a city of Davenport map included in this 1882 atlas. So also in the same year, um, uh, Melchior Hubinger joined with his brother Adam, who had recently immigrated, and um, established the Hubinger's Photographic Art Gallery. And uh, that was uh, also called Hubinger's Photo Studio and Art Emporium. And you can see the very fancy building uh, on the right side there. And that was, uh, I believe, mostly run by Adam, who did the portraiture like the one you see on the left. Uh, and Hubinger, uh, Melchior uh, did most of the map making kind of work because they both together produced um, several albums of views of the city of Davenport with photographs uh, showing different sites and buildings and residences. Uh, the 1887 publication called the first album of the city of Davenport or its German version was the Erste Album, um, which also was called the album of Davenport and vicinity that included uh, the the um, color version of the 1882 topographical map of Scott County on paper folded in the back of this uh, little booklet. In 1890, the brothers published this cute little uh, book called Davenport, Iowa, Indelible Photographs. The little picture of Iowa corn and had views of uh, buildings again. And this is a view from the courthouse. We also have um, some other albums. One is called The Album of the Three Cities, published in 1891. And in 1892, The Album of Davenport, Iowa. In 1892, Adam closes the business and moves to Peoria but Melchior continues working in Davenport uh, on his own, uh, calling it now the Human Jar Surveying and Map Publishing Company. So this is the uh, second Scott County Atlas 
um, published by Hubinger. Um, this was done in 1894. It includes updated Scott County and township maps. You can see this one's much more detailed. There's the county map. Uh, new additions would be city and town and village maps. Here is Princeton and Walcott. And there was also a large map of Davenport that was uh, up in quarters across two pages of the atlas. And this was possibly developed from the unknown uh, 1882 map uh, of the city of Davenport and another one that was done in 1890, which we do have in our collection. But it doesn't reproduce too well because it's encapsulated and there's a lot of glare. So there was a map um, published in 1890 of just the city of Davenport. Supposedly, it was bound in an, in an atlas form with two with another map that had a different scale, um, but ours is just that single map. So, um, there was also uh, this topographical map of the Tri-Cities. And this was a version of a map that was actually created the year before the Atlas in 1893. That was the year of the Chicago World's Fair. And that is indeed where um, uh, Hubinger displayed it for the first time in the Iowa Pavilion at the famous uh, 1893 World's Fair in Chicago. Sadly, we don't have a copy of that, the standalone map, just this one as it's reproduced in the 1894 Atlas. But we can get a sense of, of uh, this handsome work, said the Davenport Democrat on May 30th of 1893. Um, it's as accurate as it is handsome and asks the readers, have you seen the topographical map? It was on display in Hubinger's uh, offices before he brought it up to the World's Fair. They say, it is not only a thing of beauty, but it is a marvel of accuracy. For instance, it was examined by Lardner and Schnitger of the Street Railway Company. The two gentlemen followed with their eyes the lines that displayed the street railway system of the three cities in all its ramifications, and not a switch or a turnout did they find missing or misplaced, nor were any inserted where they did not exist. Uh, so there was also a city map of Davenport based on the topographical map of the Tri-Cities that showed the sewerage system, the drainage system. And this atlas included a profile of the Mississippi River along the Rock Island Rapids. And the canal and the railroad systems in the region and contained directory of the leading business houses in Davenport and the leading farmers of Scott County. There was also a much more extensive history of Davenport and Scott County included in the Atlas and there was a German version um, also included called the Historische Überblick der Stadt Davenport und Scott County. Just practicing my German pronunciation. In 1902, Hubinger began preparation for a map and atlas of the state of Iowa 
to be shown at the St. Louis, Louisiana Purchase Expo Exposition. That would be in 1904. He published this topographical pocket map of Scott County. Um, and in this text here, a word to the user of this map. He, um, he said he was asking uh, anyone who, who saw the map to please uh, make some corrections if, if they're warranted. It would be a favor to us, he said, if you will promptly advise us of any inaccuracies, deficiencies, or changes. Uh, the plan was to make a smaller map of each county and sell advertising space to raise interest in the atlas and um, money for the project for the um, exposition in St. Louis. And it was, as you can see, it was signed the Iowa State Atlas Publishing Co Company. So he had changed the name of the company to, uh, to focus on this particular project, which was a huge undertaking. And here's the map with the advertisements. And this is the Atlas of the State of Iowa from 1904. And there are scenes on the title page here you can see from the St. Louis Exposition. It had these, included these lovely uh, geological maps and uh, maps of political, of congressional and senator districts. As for Scott County, this lovely blue map, uh, which we hope some people got back to him and is was perfectly accurate for the time, made, the, made their corrections. So it included pages of photographs of Davenport including parks, residences, institutions like the new Carnegie Public Library, right here on the corner of 4th and Main Streets. Uh, there's also churches, images of churches and cemeteries. Uh, there was a page of all the public schools in Davenport, the Davenport Manufacturing and Jobbing Houses, and some views of the Rock Island Arsenal. So the following year, Hubinger published his third Atlas of Scott County um, in 1905. And this relied heavily upon the items that he included in the in the state of Iowa Atlas. So it still included um, Scott map of Scott County. Um, and especially, especially this uh, um, a new map here was this which caused a lot of excitement in the local newspapers was a map of rural routes in Scott County. So that was new from the 1894 Atlas of Scott County. Um, updated maps of the city of Davenport and the sewer map an up, updated sewer map. And we have, this is um, an unencapsulated copy, but we have a beautiful encapsulated copy that you should come see. Come see the Davenport sewers. The colors are very, very subtle and very interesting. Most of these were hand colored uh, and then photographically reproduced. 
so it included all the same scenes of Davenport that the state of Iowa atlas included, but um, he added in this atlas something specific to the county and the city of Davenport. Here's Davenport Industries, leading manufacturing plants, uh, specific pages of advertisement for businesses in Davenport. This, there's the Davenport Malting Company showing all the businesses inside the works. Um, on the right is a advertisement for the Tri-City Railway Company that could take uh, you to Blackhawk's Watchtower in Rock Island, uh, Rock Island the, which was a pleasure resort at the time. And also uh, there's an ad for the Turner Hall, the, the German club, Turnverein. But very exciting for me. Uh, this atlas also included um, information about the Iowa Publishing Company. So that's Hubinger's business. So here is the group of the, the surveyors and the employees. Um, and uh, you can see here on this side, um, inside the rooms, this is a picture of the building. Um, and then you can see inside the rooms and this one, they are actually working on the huge, gigantic map of uh, the state of Iowa, which was uh, also, and you can see a picture of it just below here, that uh, with people to scale that, so it was the Atlas and this giant wall map that were displayed um, in St. Louis. So we know who some of the employees were, including Hubinger's. Uh, there's another picture of Melchior, and this his son was named Henning. He also had a daughter named Anna. And his wife was name was Anna too. Um, there uh, in the 1904 atlas, there were also portraits of Davenport and Scott County citizens, but there are even more in the 1905 atlas. There are actually 20, over 20 pages of portrait photographs. Um, and in this one, you can see a, this is a portrait of J.B. Hostetler, who was one of the portrait photographers for the Atlas. And he's another uh, local history hero for us. We have, of course, the portrait photography from the Hostetler studio up on our upper Mississippi Valley digital image archive. Um, so, uh, since Adam was gone at this point, he used other photographers in in uh, in Davenport for this project. So, as you can imagine, this is invaluable for uh, having photos for people interested in research researching their ancestors in Scott County. Um, it also included. Reminiscences, reminiscences of the early settlers of Scott County, including a special page for the German settlers, and also um, this feature on the Iowa Soldiers Orphans Home. In 1907, there was a new city map of Davenport, the map of the city of Davenport, Iowa created by Hubinger of the Iowa Publishing Company. And this was um, a huge map found in Atlas. This shows the, the first opening um, showing a street map of Davenport. And that's also a descendant of, of the 1890 map. 
and this is part of the brilliantly colored version of the atlas that we have showing the original town. You can see Washington Square here. This is Ward 4. Here is, down here is St. Anthony's Church and the library. Um, the old high school, St. Luke's Hospital. And the, these are really, really vivid colors. So I do invite you to come to Special Collections to see this map because it is amazingly beautiful. Here's East Davenport and the just developing McClellan Heights here. The village of East Davenport rather. Uh, here's the city cemetery, Ebenezer Cooks Editions, Mueller Lumber Company, uh, Maple and Willow Island, which would become Credit Island later, and the parks, Central Park, now Vanderveer, and Fejeveri Park. So I'm going to jump ahead to 1916 now to compare the 1907 map to a similar work. This also has beautiful coloring to it. Um, it's much more detailed than the 1907 map. This goes section by section in the city. And the, this doesn't do, these images don't do justice to the colors, the beautiful colors here. Um, but this was also meant um, to show the the land, uh, what's what was called the town lands, and as opposed to the to the um, the county farmlands. Uh, and this was the the parcels were divided into blocks and lots, lo blocks and lots. And uh, that's how you know deeds were recorded. So this was really uh, something that was useful for uh, city and county officials and anyone in the real estate business. Um, this shows the town of Bettendorf now, uh, which had developed quite a bit since by now, by 1916. So next we'll go back another, we'll go back another few years to a street map of Davenport. And this is the first one that indexes every single street in the city. This was included with a booklet titled The Famous Davenport Plan. Um, the, the map folded down into this little booklet. The Davenport plan was an effort by the Greater Davenport Committee Incorporated, which was a group of businessmen uh, to promote economic development in the city. Um, so there's eight pages describing that, um, concluding with a plan of the business center of Davenport at that time. And there's more advertisements in here. Um, picture of the Putnam building when it was first built. And it, there's uh, advertisements all along the back too of the map. So this is a map of Iowa showing highways maintained by various associations. And this was created in 1912. By then, uh, the automobile had become um, a more popular form of transportation. And in 1910, um, Meltier Hubinger had been lured to Des Moines to start his business there. Uh, by um, someone who was involved in the, in the automobile industry, 
um, and wanted to create um, uh, road atlases of the state. Um, so this is that published that published atlas of 1912. Uh, Davenport was the starting point for this river to river road that went between Davenport in, and Omaha, Nebraska, across Iowa. And um, these are some blazings or markers for highways meant for automobile travel. The map of Scott County included in this Iowa Atlas uh, shows not only all the the named highways and and roads, but includes listings in all the various towns of places where you could get gas, places where you could stay the night, um, anything a motorist might need. Um, most of the advertisements that you see have to do with cars or garages or gas stations, tires, um, cars and motorcycles too. Here uh, is a plan of the, the route, the best routes for traveling by automobile within the city of Davenport. And it also describes places you can stay in Davenport and a little description of the Rock Island Arsenal on the right. So all these car um, dealerships, tire repairs, a lot of change in the types of advertisements in, in this road atlas. And there was even a car that was made in Moline, Illinois called the Midland, the Midland vehicle, a well-balanced car. So they paid for, they paid to advertise in the, in the Atlas, of course. So when we come to the fourth uh, Scott County Atlas, you see a lot of changes that come uh, because of the introduction of automobile travel. Um, and so it still has um, maps of the townships showing the landowners' names um, and showing, they're still showing um, city and town maps. Here's Rockingham, Leclerc. But now there are driving routes that are shown through the county. Uh, this was called the, the map of Scott County, Iowa, showing primary and county road systems. So those are all the named roads that were good for travel by car. And the Davenport map that is included in this atlas um, is, was also issued separately in 1918. And this is a really nice colored map that I think became the basis for lots of uh, city maps um, going forward. So, that's where we'll end off the presentation. Um, there is one more atlas that was published um, of Scott County called the Tri-City Farmers Atlas that included, a uh, Tri-County Farmers Atlas that included, I know Muscatine and one other county. Uh, we don't have that in our collection. You can see it on the University of Iowa's page. Uh, so if you see one of those around, we'd love to have that too. And in, in addition to the elusive 1882 map of the city of Davenport and the um, Schmidt and Hubinger's Atlas for the same year. Um, 
and yeah, if you see any any map published by Hubinger uh, in uh, for any part of Iowa, we'd love to have it for our collections. And um, he, so the the Tri County Atlas was published in 1921, and through the early 20, 1920s, he operated out of Peoria, Illinois. Um, and he died there in 1923. He uh, unfortunately died from an infection he got um, in his foot. And one of the obituaries published said that he died from an ill-fitting shoe. <laughs> so a sad way for this wonderful um, map maker and publisher to end his life. <laughs> um, uh, but he really left a mark on on Dav on um, he he uh, on. Davenport local history. We couldn't do it without these maps that he he created. And again, please let me know if you have any questions. Um, and I and um, thank you for joining me.